With her gentle gaze and athletic posture, this cow is a beauty. She bears the number 1929, but everyone knows her as Emily. Her coat gleams, and she's an outstanding producer. All reasons why she was recently ranked among the best cows in the state of Mecklenburg-Vorpommern. Four years old, she has already had calves twice and produces 50 liters of milk a day. She's one of 800 high-performance cows on this milk farm. Dienand Kippers, a Dutchman, is the herd manager. Emily is one of his best animals. She had a calf in December, and last week I inseminated her, and I hope she's pregnant again. So a new one's on its way? I hope so, otherwise it can't continue. Why not? At some point she'll stop giving milk. She has to calf again to keep producing milk. What happens to a cow that stops giving milk? It's off to the slaughterhouse. The carp dairy farm doesn't slaughter cows. That's done elsewhere. Female calves begin producing milk at two years of age. Male calves are sold off to sausage makers. All of that makes money, but not as much as this. A biogas plant turns cattle dung into electric energy for the public power grid. Without methane, the farmer couldn't pay his bills because the price of milk has tanked. He doesn't get enough per litre. We need 35 cents to cover our costs and just break even. No profit there at all. At the moment, milk wholesales for 19 to 20 cents, so we lose 15 cents per liter. Do the math. 20,000 liters means a loss of around 3,000 euros a day. Without biogas, dairy farm owner Christian Karp would have given up long ago. He has about 20 employees just to take care of the cows and take them to the milking machines. He says the whole operation is species appropriate because only contented cows give high quality milk. The stall and milking machines are as modern as can be. This facility is considered the Mercedes among milking stands. In recent years, Christian Karp has invested 2.4 million euros in equipment. Wasn't that rather risky? The ups and downs used to average out over the years, but last year they repealed the system that regulated how much each farmer could produce. There have always been times where milk prices were down, but prices have been low for a long time now. I'll have to recoup what I'm losing now in the next years. That'll be very difficult. And who will bear the burden? The cows are driven to the milking stand three times a day. Emily finds her spot by herself. The machine recognizes her immediately, cow number 1929. Projected production this time is 16 liters. Will she fulfill expectations? This is what she was bred for to produce twice as much milk as cows did 20 years ago. Now though, if dairy farmers in Germany are to survive, overproduction has to be drastically reduced. Germany needs 3 to 5 percent less production. We already have whole warehouses full of powdered milk. Cutting back by 10 percent would send a signal and raise the price fast. That's the law of supply and demand. Why isn't that done? Farms would have to pull together. Currently, each farmer secures his own liquidity by producing as much milk as possible. It's absurd, but we have to produce large volumes to cover our costs and pay our bills. So Emily has to produce lots too. Right now she's reached 12 liters, now 13. It's like a race. She's meant to finish in 10 minutes. The finish line's in sight. Emily is one of the last cows here to shed the milking pump, and she's reached her 16-litre quota. Afterward, she seems a little dazed, but her working day isn't over. This evening, in a few hours, she'll be milked again. <laughs> 